Well, this episode is sure to be uncomfortable and disturbing. Pervy old men who lust over girls' bodies like a brand new shiny car. Um, Vic, you're just as, if not more pervy than these two fighters. <laughs> Roshi and Jiraiya don't have anything on me. I don't just stare at the booty, I cherish the booty and would do anything to hold it just once. <laughs> See what I mean? Uncomfortable and disturbing. Okay, Vic, now just say your line so we can start already. <laughs> this is fictional fights! Surprisingly, Master Roshi's story doesn't begin with anything perverted. Trained by Master Mutaito, Roshi became an incredible martial artist and was the first human to climb Korin's tower. Roshi and his master even fought against the evil King Piccolo. Unfortunately, they failed and fled to figure out a way to beat him. Roshi's master returned one day with a technique that would succeed in sealing away King Piccolo. Mutaito sealed King Piccolo in an electric rice cooker and Roshi threw it in the bottom of the ocean. He created the turtle school based on his master's teachings and later retired to a small island for years. He remained there as the turtle hermit until he met two very special boys. He promised to teach them everything he knew for a price. And this is where the pervy crap comes in. Am I the only gentleman here? After they paid him, Roshi taught them various styles and techniques. Like in the turtle school, Roshi passed down the teachings of his master to Goku and Krillin. Some of these techniques include the Zanzokin, which lets Master Roshi travel so fast that it creates an after image. However, Roshi did keep some things to himself. He can knock people out with electricity or put them to sleep with hypnosis. He used a drunken stall against Goku, whom was unable to predict the movements because he had never been drunk before. Those techniques do take a bit of time to perform though, and while he did learn the sealing technique from his master, it kills the user no matter if the technique succeeds or not. Sheesh! Lots of risky techniques! Luckily, his best one he can perform without being in any danger. In fact, it's the move he invented, the most iconic move in the entire series. The Turtle Destruction Wave, also known as the Kamehameha! <laughs> this destructive beam of key travels at hypersonic speeds and obliterates whatever is in its path. But wait, what if there's too much to destroy and one little Kamehameha doesn't quite cut it? Not to worry, Roshi has found a way to instantly increase the power of his body and ki to its maximum potential. This increase is known as Instant Steroids Roshi! While that would be funny, it's incorrect. The fans have named it as Max Power Roshi, and its strength shouldn't be taken lightly. His strength is comparable to Tian Shenhan who had the power to destroy the entire Budokai arena. With a Max Power Kamehameha, Roshi was able to demolish Mount Frypan. Mount Frypan is based off the flaming mountains in China, which can reach up to heights of 2,600 feet! To demolish it like Roshi did, you'd need about 31.7 megatons of TNT. Now that's a lot of TNT! We should mention that Roshi's Kamehameha is made out of Ki, which can also be used for defense. Roshi should already be strong enough to handle his own attacks, so that Ki armor should definitely aid his durability. He should also be fast enough to dodge his own Kamehameha, giving him hypersonic plus speeds. Roshi is very intelligent as he has centuries worth of knowledge and experience. How did he live for centuries you ask? Well, Roshi actually gained immortality from an immortal phoenix that ironically died from eating rotten birdseed. I wish I was making that up. Just like the phoenix, Roshi cannot die from aging, but he is still vulnerable to disease and any unnatural way of being killed. Still though, immortality, laser beams, instant steroids, not bad for an old man. Not bad at all. 
If only he wasn't such a pervert. Oh, don't be a baby hero. Only one more old guy to go. We're halfway done. Now let's see if Jiraiya is just as cool as Roshi. Let's Unfortunately, Jiraiya's story isn't as clean as Roshi's. This pervy sage was trained under Hiro's and Sarutobi, the third Hokage, with his friends Orochimaru and the lovely Tsunade. These three students went on many missions together, with Jiraiya's interest in Tsunade growing more and more every day. Like her br- Leo! Do I really have to say this? <laughs> say it! Say it! His interest... Didn't Tsunade grew more and more every day as Tsunade's breasts... <laughs> <laughs> this is too rich! Screw you, Leo. I'm skipping the rest of these pervy jokes and getting right to his abilities. I just have to say the dumplings you serve here are absolutely delicious. Of course, with a lovely thing like you serving them, they couldn't be anything else. <laughs> well, really, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> In fact, as good as these dumplings are, I bet you're even tastier, aren't you? <laughs> we would go more in depth with his long story, but here is being a baby. Characters in the Naruto universe use a reserve of natural energy called chakra to perform special techniques called jutsu. Running out of chakra means no jutsu. Each ninja has their own special kind of jutsu, so let's look at Jiraiya's. Jiraiya can create a barrier with the canopy method formation that allows him to sense whatever is in the area. He can also trap foes in a toad that's bigger on the inside than the outside. Its stomach acid burns. Jiraiya also uses a special wind technique that he taught to Naruto, the Rasengan. He has an earth release technique called Swamp of the Underworld that turns the ground below the enemy into quicksand. Violent quicksand. He even has a fire release jutsu called the Flame Bullet. <laughs> Look at all these elements. We should have had him fight Aang last episode instead. He also has the Shadow Clone technique which allows him to create clones of himself out of chakra. And how could we possibly analyze the Toad Sage without bringing up his summoning techniques? With Jiraiya's Toad summoning ability, he can bring the enormous Toad, Gamabunta, into the battle. And trust me, this frog can certainly pack a punch. Oh, speaking of toads, Jiraiya also has the ability to turn you into a frog with the obviously named turning into a frog technique. One tap on the forehead with this technique and you'll croak. Literally. Now Jiraiya's feats and stats are quite simple. His speed scales to Pain who has massive hypersonic feats. In an official data book, it says Jiraiya's Rasengan is strong enough to hollow out an entire mountain! And he's durable enough to survive attacks from Naruto with a Four Tails Cloak, which has been shown to be able to destroy large parts of forests. Good thing these feats are so simplistic! Now we have time to talk about more of his jutsu! That's right, he gets even more when he enters Sage Mode! In Sage Mode, Jiraiya can use the Amphibian Technique where he summons two small toads that help him gather natural energy. That way he has even more chakra at his disposal! Now let's talk about the Goemon! This Sage Technique is basically a more powerful flame bullet that surrounds the area with fire that burns up to thousands of degrees. In addition to extra jutsu, Sage Mode also increases the stats of the user! Speed, strength, and the user's chakra reserve all get upgrades. Sheesh, with all these cool ninja powers, you gotta wonder why Tsunade hasn't just given it to him already. Oh, for crying out loud, I thought we were done with the pervy stuff. It's never over! <laughs> Let's just hurry it up and get it over with. It's time for a fictional fight! <laughs> What's up, guys? Leopold the Brave here, giving Alex303 an amazing shout out for this amazing animation! Yeah! So go check out his channel, the link is in the description down below. And now let's get on to the fight. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Huh. Aha.
<laughs> Ribbit. Ah, how perfect. One less pervert in this universe. <laughs> I know you're just upset because I got you to admit you liked Tracer a couple episodes ago. Oh, shut up already and help me explain the results. Alright, alright. I just had to get my gloating out of the way. The Ninja Man won, and here's why. Both Roshi and Jiraiya are extremely powerful. However, the difference comes down to how they use their power. Jiraiya's powerful arsenal was speedy and backed up with a gigantic reserve of chakra that allows him to do multiple unique jutsu. Meanwhile, the power of Roshi's arsenal uses attacks with a long startup like the max power Kamehameha, and attacks with great risk like the technique he used when he tried to seal up King Piccolo. You know, the attack that killed him? Even if Roshi successfully pulled off that sealing technique, he'd still technically lose this matchup since the move kills the user no matter what. Yep, Roshi would die from using it while Jiraiya would still be alive, just sealed away. Not only is Jiraiya's arsenal faster and contains more variety, but he also has several ways to one-shot Roshi. He could burn Roshi with the Goemon, sink him in the quicksand, or of course, turn him into a frog. Not to mention, Jiraiya can perform many of his attacks without consuming too much chakra. Almost all of Roshi's best attacks drain him quite a bit. And with Jiraiya's massively hypersonic speeds, it'd be easy for him to put a stop to Roshi's regular hypersonic attacks. With Jiraiya's greater speeds and wider arsenal, he'd definitely be able to outmatch Roshi's raw power. Well, if Age ain't gonna kill the Turtle Hermit, might as well get someone else to do it. The winner is... Jiraiya. Oh, no. Get ready for the next battle! Alright, let's get this over with. Who and what are you? Uh, I'm Karo. I'm the house inspector. Good house. You look more like a housemaid. Don't engage it in conversation! It's a talking frog! That's Mr. Sexy to you! Kero, Kero, Kero! Boy, am I glad there's no one to stop me from conquering Pico Pond myself! Me, Karo, and nobody else! Kero, Kero, Kero! Get him. <laughs> <laughs>